Hi, I'm Stacey. And I'm Rox. And we, we are, are the, the Sofa, Sofa Detectives. Detectives. Today we are going to be discussing the Thomas Marshall, Marshall case. Apologies. Um, I did a five minute fact video on it last week. Last week. Um, so now we are going to discuss what we think of the case together. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't already watched our previous video, pop along to that one. I'll put a link in the description. Watch that through and then you'll understand what we're discussing. Yeah, this one was really, really hard. I mean, none of them are easy because they're obviously all like true crime and like murder related. But when it's about, I mean, obviously in the videos and the people that are watching this, if they've seen the video, obviously they're going to see that you have to pause quite a lot and it's really affecting you. It's yeah. impossible for it to not affect you. I mean, the fact that this guy like abused this boy and then killed this boy, but then accused him of being a rent boy. Oh, the things he said about this 12 year old boy just is sickening. Like, it's really unreal. awful. And it brings up, like, I feel like every single video, I'm like, you know what's really interesting? But it brings up <laughs> interesting points about yeah. the idea of, you know how with some people, like psychologists will say that they themselves have been abused, for example, and then basically, yeah. like, shit rolls downhill. Like, they then become the abuser themselves, yeah. and then they take that out on other people. But then that's not true of every single person, because no. I know that we have known people that have been sexually abused have not become abusers themselves. So... Yeah. I just think that my feeling, and it has always been this, that sometimes you get people, so you'll have certain types of people in the world and some people will be abused and some people won't be abused. And I think you'll get some people who are abused, but they are naturally quite strong people. You get some yeah. people who are kind of quite strong and stoic and nothing that happens seems to really shake them and change them. Yet you get some people who are kind of have that natural weakness. They're maybe yeah. quite affected by things. And those people who have that natural weakness, if they're not abused, then it's fine. Like they, that's just the way they are and nothing bad happens. But yeah. if you have those people and they are all so abused it just seems like when you bring those two things together like that is the recipe for becoming the abuser like from mm -hmm. everything that i've seen i mean obviously i'm not a professional i don't know that's just my opinion um but from everything i've seen it seems that seems to be like the threshold with it where it's like cause, yeah because some people go through the most shit in the world but they don't they don't then become abusers and you just think what brought that guy not to just like doing those things but to then blame the victim and say oh he was a 12 year old rent boy and that was why i like did all the horrendous shit that i did and it was totally yeah. justified i don't like, like what, it has to break in your brain to know. bring you to that point yeah honestly like obviously like as you said it in that video you, i'm constantly like <laughs> pausing because I'm overwhelmed by it like obviously we watch a lot of true crime and yeah. we read about a lot of true crime and, and you it's do become all horrible kind of desensitized not that the details aren't horrifying but you're able to kind of talk about them yeah least. because you disassociate yourself right yeah. so like part of your mind knows it's real and it happened but you the rest of your you mind is like keep going there is looking yeah. at yeah. the facts yeah. and what happened in like a logical sense and you're not Otherwise, you get so overwhelmed with it. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't be able to keep being interested in it. Like, yeah. it's, it's like a weird, morbid I think curiosity. That's why, for the most part, we haven't really done videos that have anything to do with, like, kids in them. Because for both of us, we, we just can't. find it so hard. Yeah, I just... Weirdly, because I was in Eccles on Sea on holiday, and I was like, oh, it'd be really interesting to look at cases in the area. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, really. And it came up, and I was like, oh, like... Eccles on Sea is tiny, like like really really tiny like yeah. there's not much of it at all and it's like you wouldn't think anything would happen here yeah. and then i was like well i feel like i need to like talk about it like yeah. i've read it i've found out about it need to tell roxanne about it yeah. <laughs> because i'm horrify so like, me yeah. and then we will horrify you <laughs> just like pass it on yeah literally <laughs> and then so i decided it was a good idea to cover the story i did all the research i went home with it because obviously with two small children and being on holiday i didn't take the time to do it no, while i was there um but then sat on my sofa and trying to talk about poor thomas kind of overwhelmed me a bit like i, I mean, don't know if you can tell in the video yeah. like i think you probably could well, yeah. we're best friends <laughs> you probably could yeah but just there's like long pauses and me taking like deep breaths because Anything with children, I, I really do struggle with. Um, I think I I mean, that's true of most people, though. 100%. Like, I can't it's begin to even imagine. You mentioned it in your video about like what the hell have the, that family been through? Like, oh. you must 
you know how like sometimes you have something that happens in your life and it's really really bad and for a short period of time your life does feel very nightmarish and very kind of ptsd -y. oh it's not a good phrase but you uh, yeah, can't wake up yeah. from it yeah. you're you're in that cycle and until you allow yourself to grieve and move forward you can't how do you ever grieve and move forward from that you can't. You know I mean? Like there is no waking up from it. There is no leaving that behind. There is no. no like grief period because for most things there's a period of grief, and then that's, that will never leave you. No. That event will never leave you. But you're able to allow yourself to move your life forward. Like how in the name of fuck do you ever move forward from you something don't. like that? You really like, don't. You like don't. you've lost. Yourself. You're never gonna have a full night's sleep. For the rest of your life that that's just that isn't it and that's knowing that forever. obviously he was arrested and convicted and given a, life, he had a sentence, life sentence didn't he but yeah. it's not good enough no like i'm sorry it's not good enough like this is probably a really unpopular opinion but if you have like a hundred percent proof i actually believe in the death sentence see, i don't care i'm gonna say it out loud yeah. see um, i feel like i completely get why you say that but i feel that it's actually I kind of like the idea of someone who's done that just rotting in prison and not knowing when the day they're that they're gonna die and that they die like because when you have the death sentence they know exactly when they're gonna die they, not they get, not always but Depend, they do well, depending get, like, on where they get like tight that it's gonna be like okay so we're gonna um, it's gonna be this week we're gonna whatever. execute you this week yeah so they get That's to true. prepare themselves mentally and psychologically they get to have their last meal they get to have often people who are kept in um like in america where they still have death sentences they often say like they'd rather be in death row because one they'll live longer and two it's better conditions yeah the yeah. thing is about Whereas, prison like, is it's not die, hard enough when you die in prison you've had to live your entire life in there you've got an old in there and now you're going to take your last breath in that room. True. And I actually feel like when you think, imagine having to do that. Like imagine, I mean, obviously we're thinking about it from being innocent people. So well, be a lot more horrified. Also, but, you know, like I'm quite reclusive, so yeah, you'd be be reading Harry Potter up all day long. Oh, always, forever. But imagine <laughs> the bit where you're like, wow. I'm actually going to die in here. And I love the thought that people who have done things like that, who have sexually abused and murdered children... Yeah, I get what you're have saying, ...have to have actually. that panic. Because they're going to be the... They're the lowest of the low in prison, right? So yeah, but they think, keep them separate. Because everyone is like, oh... They keep them separate general... from the prisoners, but they don't keep them separate from the prison guards. I know, but <laughs> they're getting the a lot of trouble if they beat on them. I don't think who would know. Who's going to know? No one's coming to visit That's that guy. That's true. But... We I don't know if he's not horrifying prison. Like, yeah. I was gonna say, don't go to my prison yeah. because it's not gonna be nice. It's not gonna there. be fun. Um, but also, I think in certain prisons and in certain wings and things like that, it's too nice. Yeah. Like prison is too nice. Like I, I know, know they're stuck mean. in a cell I get and they're not allowed well. to go and do their own shopping. Yeah. Or, and that's the only thing I could think of. That's really or exciting. Like, but they do get to watch TV, <laughs> yeah. and they do get to do this, and they do get to do that, and they do get free There's meals a day. And, um, I'm not saying we should starve them, right. but we should starve them. But yeah. um, There's certain rights yeah, that so like, in prison. And like for the majority so of people It might not be that prison, hard. Like That's fine, because they haven't committed crimes that they need to be in there for the rest of their lives for. So it's like, okay, fine, like... I don't know. Yeah. If you're comparing, if you compare like this crime that we're talking about with like someone who is like petty theft or something, petty theft, yeah. yeah, then it's like okay, fine, watch some TV and then learn your lesson and come out. No, yeah, so but, it should be different. <laughs> yeah, if that makes there, sense. It should be graded punishment, yeah. and I do completely get what you're saying with that. And I also totally get what you're saying with the death sentence because it's like some people, like people like that guy, they just need to die. There's no you know, rehabilitating. There is no rehabilitate, rehabilitating that, and there is also like. Do we really want to have any wiggle room where that could potentially ever happen again? I completely understand what because you mean. Because it would happen again. I like, totally get what you're saying. Most people that commit crimes like that, it's not a one-time no. thing. And like, that wouldn't surely have been his first time that he did that. So No, I think he was. He probably abused other people. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably like the first person he killed, because otherwise yeah. I think he would have got Normally caught Normally it's before. a graded thing, isn't it? Yeah, so like, you start off like... 
with one person because people like that who are abusers tend to be able to be really good at picking people off and knowing the people that they can isolate who are often living in difficult situations already or they just yeah. sort of see and also small town in them. people yeah. trust each other yeah. and like he had um like a grocery store like a corner shop in yeah. Eccles and Sins probably like one of the only little shops that there was so it's like the last and the kids person would go that people in. are gonna think like he's just that guy who sells sweets I wonder if, like, because sometimes life means 25 years, and I know it's changed over the time. So yeah, when we he need was, to do some Googling. Um, yeah, I was going to say, when he was put in jail in 1999, I wonder if that meant he spent the rest of his life in prison or whether he got 25 how years. how old was he when he went in prison? Do we know? Is he 52? So he potentially has already died because you don't know, you know, what has happened between sort of 1999 and now. 21 years. Yeah, but he, yeah so he'd be 70 easily could free? still be alive. 73 would be now, right? Yeah. He could very easily still be alive, so maybe we could do some googling on that and come back to you. Yeah, guys. just wonder. Like, um, I think we should do a video about like sentencing and you know, like yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, so like, it's very interesting. That interesting. <laughs> I'm like. It is. That's interesting, yes, right? It's fascinating. I mean, especially if you watch a lot of documentaries about the American justice. System. Oh yes, it's very, very different. It's that's it's absolutely insane. Like the whole three strikes and you're out rule. Like imagine you are a poor person and you basically have no real options but to sell drugs and you sell cannabis three times. Oh you God. will end up in prison and die in prison for. Do you know, I felt overwhelmed to be like the rest of Save the it life. for the next video <laughs> and just like gag you and I was gag like me. and I'm like don't do it don't do it and then I did it that's like, a snippet that's a snippet <laughs> I'm like don't do it don't do it sorry I'm gonna do it <laughs> it's done it's done it's happened I'm zipping it but yeah, anyway so yeah, look let's forward do, to that let's video do next, next video. I maybe think. we'll wrap this one up and then we'll record sentencing a video so yeah. anyway I think that's everything well yeah other than to say that just rest in peace Thomas yeah. like poor there's or, no words, is there? There isn't. Like, I know we Ooh, digress and we, like there's happens. giggling and stuff, and it, I think it's just to distract ourselves from what an awful thing yeah. that that was, like, what 100%. an awful loss. And there's nothing that you can... There's nothing that anyone could say. No, it's just... They could ever, like, come close to... That poor boy. You know, not just what he went through, but what the, his family went through. And, and still go through. Still go through, yeah. So it's a bit of a sad, um, I mean they're all sad, but a bit of a heavy one this yeah. week. Let us I think know next, what you think. Next week will be a little bit lighter. Yes. Let us know what you think of the case and if you know any other details on the case, pop them below for yeah. us. Always leave a comment and we have a true crime um, Facebook group. Yeah, so discussion group. Us. So like you can post what you think of stuff in there. And we can we will chat. respond. Definitely. So, But until the next time, stay, stay paranoid. paranoid.